I'd like to present Ruben and Yvette. Ruben is here. Where's Yvette? Is Yvette here? Come on, that the dream. They're called the Dream Students. They're going to be uh, introducing Assemblyman Gilbert Cedillo. Damas first. Hello, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Yvette Flores, and I am an undocumented nursing student. I was brought to this wonderful country at the age of three um, for a better future, um, just like a lot of many of my fellow dreamers. Um, and it's been a struggle. Um, it's, it, it's, it, it chokes me up because um, the DREAM Act means a lot, I'm sorry, to us. Um, education is the key to success. And unfortunately, you know, it, it, it gets a little tough out there with um, not being able to apply for grants, um, not being able to get employed at times. So it, it, it's tough and, you know, opportunity doesn't give its justice um, with the DREAM Act. Uh, so I would like to close with a quote um, that closes a lot of what I would like to say with this, with this DREAM Act. Um, when, we dream, when, we dream, when we dream alone, it is only a dream, but when many dream together, it is the beginning of a new reality. Thank you, and la lucha sigue. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Raul Escobar. I'm also a dream student. And first of all, it's an honor being right here and in front of everybody, sharing my story. I first of all want to um, thank Enrique for giving me the chance of standing here, speak in front of you guys about my experience. And I want to thank my mom for always being there for me. Even on my tough times, she's always there for me. <laughs> Deportation is one of the biggest fears around along undocumented families. Speaking from experience, many are terrified of being deported and forced to be separated from their families without knowing if they will be able to see them again. At the young age of 14, I encountered the scariest experience of my life when I was deported from the US and up into a country that I hardly remember, Mexico. I come from a low-income family who came to the US to pursue the American dream. My family and I left everything behind to come to the country of opportunities where if our life would change for the better. I was only two years old when my father abandoned my family. By the age of nine, my mother started to struggle financially, so she migrated to the US looking for a job. A year after migrating, my mother decided to move my older, sister, my older brother, sister, and I to the United States. She wanted us to have an education and better opportunities in life. However, poverty was also a battle for us. At the age of 10, my family of four was, was brought across the border. I was introduced to a new environment, life, and culture where the main language was English. All I knew what to say was, hi, my name is Raul, and can I go to the bathroom? It was hard adapting at first because I didn't know the language, but after several months of hard work, I started to learn it. During my freshman year, as I waited for the public bus that takes me to school, I was stopped by the border patrol and deported. They publicly humiliated me in front of others and classmates. They aggressively questioned me. I didn't want to respond to their questions because I was a minor and believed I had human rights. I was so mortified that my body started to shake and he wasn't responding as I wanted to. I felt something in my throat that wouldn't let me speak. When they asked me again where was I born, I simply replied, Mexico. That was the fact, but I didn't think it was a problem. They immediately handcuffed me and took me to their van and started the deportation process. Within six hours, I was dropped off in a house in Tijuana, Mexico, where all undocumented people that are deported are dropped off. I was told that I would be arrested if I ever tried to return to the US again. This experience made me decide to go to college even stronger because I want to pursue a better education in order to have a higher living standard for my family and I. 
It also helped me speak on behalf of others who are powerless and voiceless. I'm now an activist who organizes events for undocumented people and fights for equal rights. I realized, I realized that I had to be brave and set myself as an example for others. This experience didn't bring me down, nothing out there will. But instead, it had made me more determined to earn a college education. Thanks to the DREAM Act, I will pursue a better education in college and receive the financial help I need. Thank you. Well, you'll be our next assemblyman, man. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Mr. Richard Ibarra and Tony Mendoza. all these important people sitting in one spot. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And let's hear some more love for these two dream students who represent so many millions of the future. A little more than that, a little harder than that. Come on. What's our work? The place is finally waking up. They just did it because they're the future. Tonight I'm representing Minnie Gonzalez Ibarra, class of 1946, San Diego High, Woodrow Logan Heights, who was here with us in 1970 when we took Chicano Park, she was there. She was here when we took this place a year later. Minnie, this is for you tonight because I love you so much and you take care of uh, all the people in heaven and keep organizing. It's always an honor to be with Enrique, who like his brother Luis and my three brothers, share St. Augustine High School background. But Enrique has, and Border Angels and Pam and everybody in the group has done so much to aspire this time. They are important people of this time because they're making tomorrow happen today. And don't you believe that everything they do, people aren't paying attention. People are paying attention. The notoriety is great. The articles in, in uh, La Opinion and the San Diego Union Tribune today we're just some of the small tributes that are coming your way because of the extraordinary work you do. Thank you very much. God bless you, brother. I'd have to say that, thank you also, Enrique, for inviting me to be part of this introduction along with the assemblyman, the leader of the Latino Caucus. It's really a proud honor for me tonight. I've done a lot of introductions in my life, but maybe I've never been so excited to do one because I've been waiting for weeks and weeks to congratulate my brother in person for what he did that people thought couldn't be achieved. For his entire life, Gil Cedillo has been preparing for this time. He's been preparing in everything he's done since being a quarterback at Roosevelt High School. He learned leadership and how to build, beat Garfield. He's been doing that when he was at UCLA. He did it when he went to law school. He did it when he was part of La Hermandad. He did it when he was the leader at SCIU of the Public Employees Union of uh, Los Angeles. When he became well known around the time we first met when he was doing the Rolling Thunder organizing in downtown LA with the workers there. Gil has been part of everything important that's happened in the state for such a long time. He did something that people thought couldn't happen and he tried it over and over and over and every year it was a failure, whether it was a Democrat in, office, in the governor's office or a Republican. They'd all say, yeah, fix it this way, twist it this way, change it a little bit more and you got it. And he'd do all of that for them and with them and they'd still say Vito. They, I thought that was your middle name for a while, that you're turning Italian. You got vetoed so much, but he stayed with it. He went back every year with a driver's license. That's the next one, he'll, it'll come through behind his name and Ben and others who are there, along with Tony, will make sure that happens. But guilt has become the picture of this time and tomorrow for so many people and families who've been dreaming about their part of the American dream that they've been making happen, but 
weren't supposed to be in existence. They're going to make a presence. They're going to be the future. And they thank Gil Cedillo around this state every day for his work, especially when he lost and kept coming back. It's exciting to be here to introduce today's Si Se Puede hero, the captain of the dream team, who I'd follow any place, any time. Someone who was the product of a steel worker and a sewing factory worker to make them proud for the work they did. It's just really great to share this stage with Tony and others to welcome my friend and brother tonight for the honor when you get up with Tony here. Thank you, Gil Cedillo, for all you've done for so many. Let's let him have a lot of love.